All right, so let's get started with mechanics of materials. All right, so mechanics of materials is a branch of engineering mechanics that studies the internal effects of, sorry, stress and strain. Stress and strain, which we'll talk a lot about that later, on a solid body that is subject to the external loading. So uh, we, we, we look in statics at the external loading. We look at the forces in statics. So now in mechanics, we're going to look at the forces and then open it up on the internal stress and strain they cause. Newton's first law of motion, an object at rest stays at rest, an object in motion stays in motion, unless being acted on by an outside force, right? Really just saying that if the sum of the forces, uh, or if there's no acceleration, the sum of the forces is in zero. Uh, we are still in static equilibrium. For all of these problems in mechanics of materials, it's not going to be moving. It's not going to be accelerating. These aren't going to be flying through the air. These are going to be stationary, static equilibrium. We are still in static equilibrium. So the sum of the forces is still zero. Free body diagrams. Free body diagrams. Still important. Uh, statics is still important. Um, we're, we're going to pour uh, we're going to use everything we've done in statics uh, in this class. All right, and then two quick things about my philosophy on units and significant figures. Units, let's just say, important. Units, important. Have to have units on your answers. Have to have units on your tests. Have to have units. Keep up with units throughout the problem, and it helps you. It it points you out mistakes that you're making. It can help you when you're unsure uh, if something's correct. Units must be homogeneous. Must be homogeneous. Homogeneous means the same throughout, right? Same on the left-hand side and right-hand side of your equation. Uh, same uh, in every term. Every term. If you're adding two terms together, then those two terms have to have the same units. All right, so units, important. Significant figures, I'm not big on significant figures. I'm not a stickler for significant figures. Some books will tell you three. Uh, the way I learned it, if you really go strictly by the rules of significant figures, then I don't know. If the problem statement said this is 100, 100 newton force, I learned that was only one significant figure, and my answer should be one significant figure. But, but, uh, but anyway, I'm not big on significant figures. Here's what my, my kind of rule of thumb. Four to five significant figures throughout your problem. And just give me three to four significant figures on your final answer. Um, I generally don't take off if you give me way too many significant figures. Um, here's when I will take off a point, half a point, uh, something like that. Here's when I will take off a, a point if, if you only give me two significant figures, right? Gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. Here we go. This, this kind of gets me one-third. If you just say 0.33 and put that into your calculator, no, 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 no. It, give me a few 0.333s or just keep it as one-third. And here's what really gets me. Two-thirds is not 0.67. It's not 0.66, you know, 0.6667, or just leave it as two-thirds. So anyway, significant figures use at least three um, significant figures. All right, so that's my kind of rule of thumb for my classes. All right.